mental health, psychiatry, psychology has been taking a lot of advances in the last few years, if you have noticed. People have become aware of the need for understanding the mind. A lot of research is going on on the brain, which was never done earlier. People are getting more and more knowledgeable about how the emotions work, how people respond to situations, what makes good and bad relationships, what causes a lot of uh, mental health issues, be it depression, be it any of those things. So a lot of work has been uh, going on. The uh, one book or manual which is used almost the world over is called DSM. That is uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Psychiatry. It is a manual which is published by the American Psychiatric Association, but it is almost used worldwide by psychiatrists, mental health professionals all over the world. They keep updating it. We have DSM 1, 2, 3, 4, 4A, 5, like that, you know, new versions keep coming uh, uh, up in the last so many decades. When I went through last time, I wanted to check what the DSM says about dealing with a simple thing like jealousy. And you will be surprised. I was not surprised. But you will be surprised to know that there is no mention of jealousy in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the uh, Psychiatry. Meaning to say that they have not even given cognizance to it. They have not even given a thought that this is something that really needs to be looked into. It is an issue which people face and which has to be tackled. That is the extent to which we have firstly ignorance and secondly that you know what can be done about it that uh, you know is the uh, attitude. So let us first understand what is this jealousy. We keep hearing so often no? this one is jealous of that one, that one feels jealous, that one is like that. So it goes rolling off our tongue every now and then be it in office, be it among families and all that. Very commonly referred to this thing called uh, jealousy. Jealousy actually is a form of anxiety. It starts with that uneasiness, that questioning, that fear of what is going to happen, that anxiety. And what is this anxiety specifically? It is a sense or feeling of insecurity with regard to the affection of a loved one. You love somebody, you care for somebody, Somebody is very important to you in life. And if you find that the affection that I should be getting from this person or the way my affection should be reciprocated, if you start feeling insecure about it, if you start feeling that, no, I am not getting what I uh, want. And that is when this anxiety develops. That anxiety converts itself into what we refer to as uh, uh, jealousy. Now, the interesting thing is that jealousy is inevitably focused on who we consider to be our rival for that love or affection. Please keep this in mind. That's a very, very important uh, uh, thing. I'll explain to you as we go along. Firstly, let me also clarify that we use a few words which are, you know, very uh, connected to each other and which are normally spoken with reference to each other, but they are not necessarily the same. In fact, they are very distinct. One word which we use very often in English language is envy. Okay, envy need not be connected to a loved one. I can be envious of somebody who has built a huge house or who has got a new car or who has got a promotion. Now, that is envy and that is not jealousy because, as I said, there is no loved one about whose affection I am having any anxiety. I am just looking at somebody and saying, 
why does this person have so and so and why not me? Why is it that this person has got this wealth or status or power or whatever it uh, is? A man may, for example, look at a colleague who gets married and has an exceptionally good wife. And he feels that my wife doesn't come anywhere close to that. So he may develop that envy. No, he has got nothing to do with that man or his wife. There is no love, affection. There is no competition. Nothing is there. But the very fact that this person has got something which I don't have, that creates envy, not to be confused with uh, you know, jealousy. It is just a desire to have what the other people uh, have. Because somewhere I feel that I deserve that or I want to have that, whether I deserve it or not. And that brings into another uh, word which we commonly use in this context, and that is rivalry. Okay. Rivalry is when I'm competing with somebody. So I know that there are two of us and only one opening for a promotion. Or we are two brothers and there's only one house which we can inherit and who's going to live there and how are we going to live there. Now, these are the type of things. You must have heard very commonly this thing called sibling rivalry. The moment there's more than one child in the family, which of course is now very rare, but whenever there is more than one child, sibling rivalry is something which becomes automatic. In fact, I tell parents, if you have two growing children and there is no sibling rivalry, they don't fight with each other, they don't try to grab things from each other, there's something wrong. Please become aware. If you have two children who are perpetually having a sibling rivalry, who are trying to compete with each other, who are trying to put the other person down and climb over his or her shoulder, who's trying to show that I am better than you, that's a very healthy thing. Because rivalry is that action or that state of mind where you want to do something and achieve something. In fact, sibling rivalry, I always remind parents, is nothing to do with the sibling. It is to do with the parent. A child fights with the brother or sister only to get better deal from the parent. And that is what, what happens even as we grow up. I'm working in an organization and there are two people of my rank and my qualification or my work profile. A rivalry develops because I want to prove to the boss. Now the boss takes over where the parent was earlier, right? So I want to prove to the boss that I am better than this other guy so that when the time comes for rewards or promotion or whatever it is, I should be the one who should be given whatever and not the other uh, person. Now that is rivalry. But supposing I go into a mental state where I feel that I am losing out. The other person is getting better and better things, getting more affection and attention, getting a better deal in life. And I am not getting it. That is when that anxiety, which converts into jealousy. So insecurity plays a very, very strong role in jealousy. The same way, low self-esteem plays a very big role. Please check. Most of the people who suffer from jealousy were perpetually looking at somebody else and saying, why this one is doing this? Why that one is not getting these? Why am I not getting affection from this person? Inevitably, you will find that they are people who suffer from low self-esteem. And that is why this very interesting concept, which I have been exploring since many, many years. Very often, you will find person A becomes jealous of person B because B is helping A. Now, when you are getting help from someone, you should feel nice about that person. No, that person is going out of there to help. But you know what? Getting help on a continuous basis from the other person is an indicator that that person is in a better 
stage of life and in a position to give charity to me. I am the receiver, the other person is the giver. And that puts me off completely. And instead of being thankful to the person, I start getting jealous of that uh, uh, person. And the same thing applies with the fact that the closer the relationship, the higher the jealousy level. If I have a cousin who seems to be doing better things or getting more love and affection, I may feel jealous, but it may not affect me as much as if I have an own sibling who is getting that love and affection from others and I feel I am not getting it. More so if it is my spouse who is getting certain things which I feel, you know, I, I should get or why is that person getting things. So the closer the relationship, the greater are the chances of jealousy. And to overcome that, we need to work on the factors where we have to look inward. Most of the time, I find people are, you know, wasting their time focusing on the other person whom they are jealous about. If instead of that, I look inward and I ask myself, why do I have this anxiety? Why am I comparing myself with this person? Why am I feeling so insecure whether I'm getting the love of this person and sufficient love or not? Whether this that love is being distributed to others and whether I'm not getting enough of it. So if I start looking inward, then the chances are that I will be able to overcome the uh, jealousy. So what I've done is, I marked out as I usually do, you know, because whenever we have to work on an issue, it's not enough for me to just give you a lecture on it and leave it off. We want to have a takeaway where we specifically point out what are the ways and means by which you can improve your quality of life. So how do you overcome jealousy is a small slide that I made, just a few very simple and very practical uh, points about overcoming the jealousy. You look at the expression of this person on the left, you'll get an idea about what I'm talking about when I talk about jealousy. Okay. So here you are. First step. First step. Accept that you are feeling jealous. And analyze why. Acceptance of jealousy. Many of us do not want to accept uh, uh, that I am jealous. No, no, why should I be jealous? See that why should I be jealous itself is an indicator that I'm jealous. So accept it. Nothing wrong with it. It's an emotion which comes. It comes from within. I didn't ask to be jealous. It so happened that I'm feeling jealous of the person. And why? Because that person, you know, seems to be getting more love and affection. That person seems to be more popular. The person seems to be having better friends. The person seems to be getting unwanted attention from others, which I feel should have been my right. Whatever may be the reason, analyze why. Then the next step, please talk it over with someone. Confess. Believe me, it makes a world difference. But you have to be very selective in select, uh, choosing whom to talk to. That's where, you know, the factor of counseling and all that comes in. Why is it that we go on emphasizing on the you know, importance of counseling? Because a counselor is a neutral person. A counselor doesn't take sides. A counselor doesn't give you advice. A counselor never puts you down. So look for a person who is totally reliable, who will not unnecessarily, you know, pass judgment on you or give you advice, but go ahead and confess. Once you have done that, you explore your past shortcomings, disappointments, even unrelated failures, because we carry that through in life. Earlier, I had lost out on this, this, this relationship. Earlier, I was unhappy with that particular person. Earlier, I felt jealous of such a person. So stop for a moment. Do a little bit of introspection on why and how my past was. That will give me an idea about where I stand today. Then list out your achievements. 
in other fields to reinforce to push up your uh, you know self esteem that i am not a failure okay in this particular case i wanted this love and affection but it is going off somewhere else and i'm feeling jealous etc but i do have other achievements maybe i have other very good uh, you know uh, relationships where i'm very strong and secure in them make a list of those achievements of yours it will give you a big boost and then remind yourself that by being jealous you are considering yourself inferior the moment i start feeling jealous it is an acknowledgement that i am inferior to the other person why do you want to do that that is what you use to give yourself a push up again someone loving another is not a reflection on you supposing i love my mother very much and i want her love and affection and i want all her attention but she she, she seems to be pushing all her love and affection to my brother right now if i take it as a form of you know a, a failure on my part or a negativity on my part i'll start feeling miserable so i have to remind myself that my mother loving my brother more than me and that's my perception of course is not a reflection on my capabilities it is her way of looking at things she may have so many reasons why she is doing this particular uh, um, thing similarly not being chosen by another person may have many reasons she may be feeling more secure because my brother has a house where she can live in her old age and whatever it is so she is showering all her love and affection on her not because she feels that my brother is a better person or a better son than i am but she feels that's where her bread is buttered she has to go through it so when i start analyzing all these uh, um, things that there could be other reasons which are not connected to my capabilities and my performance or my relationship and then one very important and a very interesting thing is to befriend the rival and learn how he is getting better of you so the more time i spend with my brother understanding what is it that he does that he gets more love and affection from our mother so instead of keeping away from him instead of considering him a rival and you know pushing him away and being bitter with him befriend him go closer to him and learn from uh, him and practice self love if you love yourself how much others love you or don't love you or to what extent and what comparison it really doesn't matter so much and the last and most important point perhaps is that your performance is not directly connected to your self worth even if i was unable to win the love of my mother or whoever it uh, is that is nothing to do with my self worth simple points but you practice that and you will be able to overcome now that is as far as jealousy is concerned today as i had mentioned to you i have taken up two topics which are directly you know connected to each other what is the second topic it is possessiveness they very closely connected to uh, each other possessiveness is an instinct by which you have this drive you have this desire and you have this obsession to control others to have others under my grip i want to literally possess the other person and it's a very sad state of affairs because believe me nobody in this world possesses another human being you don't even possess your own children who are born from you forget about anybody else every individual human being has his or her own rights own way of thinking so many factors so possessiveness is something which makes you you know unnecessarily feel that i should have more control i should have more you know power over this uh, uh, person and when that does not happen you start feeling very very 
miserable. Possessiveness also. Remember, masquerades are love. I love this person so much. I don't want her to go out alone. I don't want her to be over here. I don't want her to be with other people. I don't want her to do this. And I'm telling myself, I am doing that because I love that person so much. No, that is not love. Possessiveness is possessiveness, whether I like it or uh, not. Now, possessive, inanimate things is fine. If you say, this is my car, this is my bike, this is my house, this is my mobile or whatever it is, and you're possessive about it, it's okay. But what I am concerned about and what I am talking about today is people becoming possessive about other human beings. That is the most dangerous activity that we sometimes get entrapped into. And when we realize that I am not being able to completely have the person in my control or in my power, I start feeling miserable. We do it sometimes in general. Somebody may be possessive about all his family. Somebody may be possessive only about his wife or only about his daughter. Whatever it may be, that is not uh, important. What is important is that why are you feeling so insecure? Why are you feeling so scared? Why is there a strong need that I want to have this person under my control? Why is it that I become suspicious whether that person is giving me enough attention and is heeding to whatever I say and is under my control or uh, not? So the moment we start working on and understanding the fact that human beings, whoever it may be, are independent their emotions are independent. Their actions are uh, independent. And I can only hope for having their love and affection. I can work towards improving my relationship, getting them closer to me, interacting on a closer note with uh, them. But the moment I start getting this feeling that I have to possess this person, I have to have this person under my control, Sometime or the other, it leads to a very, very big disappointment. And then the person really feels miserable. So as I said about jealousy, here you are. I made out seven very basic and simple points on how do you deal with this thing called possessiveness. If I am feeling that strong need that I have to possess, this person belongs to me. What do I do? How do I overcome that? And what do I do to deal with this sort of a situation? Number one is what I just told you a couple of minutes back, that possessiveness is not love. Do not try to deceive yourself by making these statements, which a lot of people do. I am controlling that person. I am spending more time with that person. I am responsible for that person because I love that person so much. No. Actually, love is what that old proverb says. No, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it is yours. If it doesn't, it never was. So love is a process of setting somebody free rather than getting somebody under your control. So please be very clear on that. Then list out your possessions. What do I actually possess? Inanimate things, as I told you, yes, be happy that I have a house, I have a vehicle, I have this, I have so many clothes or I have a bank balance or whatever it is. Yes, they are yours. And you can be very possessive about them saying that I don't allow anybody to touch my vehicle or I don't allow anybody to touch my books in my library or whatever. It is your right. People may at most feel that oh, you're a selfish person, you don't share. But beyond that, it doesn't matter at all. But when it comes to human beings, 
are they really your possessions? I remind you again of one of my most favorite authors, Khalil Gibran, who even said that your children are through you and not of you. Your children do not belong to you. Your children are not your possessions. Your you know, subordinates in your office are not your possessions. Your family members are not your possessions. And then let go by telling yourself, what is the worst that can happen? If this person goes out of my life, or if this person doesn't listen to what I am saying and doesn't respond to what I am asking, what is the worst that can happen? This is a wonderful exercise which I find is very useful whenever you are stuck with a difficult situation. What we refer to as worst case scenario. Sit and actually write down one, two, three, four points. What will happen if I let go of this uh, person? Surprisingly, in most cases, you will find that nothing great is going to happen. The world is not going to shut down. And that gives you the reassurance that I can continue to have a relationship. I can continue to love that person without being possessive about that person. Right? And that takes us to the fourth point. Is it worth holding on at all costs? So many relationships actually have got spoiled because A is possessive about B and B feels very uncomfortable. I don't want to be possessed. I am a human being with my own rights, with my own emotions, with my own desires. And I don't want to belong to somebody to that extent. And the person actually when A starts becoming more and more possessive, B starts going more and more away. So is it worth holding on at all costs, making B feel miserable, feel unhappy, feel like wanting to get away from you. It's not worth it. And that is what you have to remind yourself. And then actually go through the process, at least for a short time of letting go. So for some time, I will let go of this person. I'm not saying you cut off or anything like that, but I stop being possessive. And I give freedom to the other person that you do what you want. I'm not going to control you on a day-to-day -day or a regular basis. Try it out and see. Like I always tell that when you have a very bad relationship, have a trial separation. Be away from each other. Give space. The same thing happens over here. Let go. You may live under the same roof. You may do whatever you uh, want. You may have... Continue to have interactions, but let go as far as the possessiveness is concerned. And that brings me to the next and very important point. Don't try giving up possessiveness because it becomes indifference. Reduce it. Give that little, you know, long rope, as you say. Don't give up. Don't try to become a sannyasi saying that, no, I will not possess anybody. I will not have anybody yet. Let anybody go ahead and do the work. Then it becomes indifference on your part. Or it becomes a sacrifice which you are not happy with. And sometime or the other, it backfires. And last but not the least, the final point. Aim towards a healthy relationship. Aim towards getting warmer and more involved with the person Make certain gestures and certain actions which will attract the other person to come closer to you rather than trying to hold on to that uh, person. Very simple seven points based not on any theories or any you know, research work or any academic work, but purely out of practical human experience of what I have seen people work on, do, and succeed to a great extent, you too can do it. Become aware wherever and whenever you are jealous or possessive. Use these simple points. And now, I deserve that one minute break, right? So we have Seema coming in to tell you one or two very interesting uh, developments in Banjara. And then I'll continue.
fascinating our human mind is right just amazing in fact so many people when they come uh, to meet us you know so they're like i was so i want to i'm interested in psychology i wanted to take up psychology you know when i was uh, uh, a student but somehow i could not do it i ended up taking engineering can i still do it so there are a lot of people who uh, want to understand the human behavior better who want to develop or work on their interpersonal relationships and uh, try to understand what's going on be it an hr professional professional or you know, people from various fields so what we are doing today is we are having a session for our dcs 23 students so basically they have the as you know the program uh, is starting in june but we are having this uh, special class for them an orientation class where we are uh, going to take up the topic can non psychologists become counselors So you know why we came up with this idea is because when people come and say you know I've done my masters in psychology I've just but I don't know if you make me sit down and do a one on one counseling session I don't think baba I can do it right or there are people who are you know they have very nice uh, career they are a bank you know somebody's a banker somebody's working as an hr professional but they are like you know I don't know sitting on this side you know especially let's say a banker who is into loans and stuff like that this i know i'm being tough but i i feel very empathetic that is where my heart lies can i still learn uh, psychology can i still get into counseling or then there are these people who have had very fulfilled uh, careers as uh, you know army officials or defense officials or uh, you know other places they are like okay i'm still young and energetic can i somehow reach out to others so each one of this category right from you know the young adults to middle age to uh, you know the uh, slightly older ones everybody slightly when i say slightly we've had uh, <laughs> students who are in their 80s also so human behavior and human psychology is such you know at any age and the more experienced we are uh, the better understanding we start getting of uh, you know this behavior so if you think that any of you or anybody uh, you know of who could be interested uh you know uh, in understanding uh, uh psychology or human behavior better today evening we are having this program it's a classroom program from 4 o'clock to 5:30 the whole team will be here ali will be you know uh, taking us through the session and uh, come come and enjoy the session and uh, you want to recommend somebody else to come uh, most welcome so four on the dot we start here in rt nagar banjara academy so most welcome right back to ali yes there we are from the corner of my eye i have been watching some of these uh, things which have been coming into the chat box let me start with vidya who is always very active and very forthcoming she says if your own sibling keep on discouraging you and not motivated you is it jealousy or their insecurity insecurity leads to jealousy vidya when a person feels insecure about the love and affection which she feels she should be getting then she moves into the realm of jealousy always needs to be taken as they are saying for our good people who are saying things for your good will not be jealous and will not be possessive they will just give you certain tips maybe a little bit of advice here and there or some suggestions but they will not show any signs of jealousy sibling always says that family only can say everything to you about your negatives on your face but not outsiders i disagree those days are gone when we had very close knit families and everything had to be restricted within the family today the very definition of family has changed so much that we can cannot describe as outsiders sometimes your best friend can be a better uh, you know a person to help you and guide you than your own siblings or your family members in my case outsiders support me morally and encourage me rather than my family exactly with their that's what i was saying lot of people is not just in your case the way the family is set up and all that has changed there are more and more people you know who find that outside the family they are getting more love and affection or whatever 
you call it. People only discourage and always demotivate and support only financially. Yes, that is where I want you to become aware that whether it is a family member, whether it is a friend, whether it is somebody very close to you, you need to be aware of whom to listen to, how to go about it. Be aware if somebody is jealous of you and trying to give you unnecessary advice which may take you down. Surekha says, jealousy can be a double-edged sword. It can either spur us to achievement or blind us to our reality and unique capabilities. How can we harness this power and draw the fine line for expectations and jealousy to work favorably for us? When you have that you know, frame of mind where you know you feel spurred on to achievement if you recollect right in the beginning i told you that is what we define as rivalry rivalry is a positive thing rivalry is where the person says that i also want my achievements i also want to compete i also want to do better i also want to go higher up or i also want to have a closer relationship and more love and affection so rivalry is where you get spurred on, as Surekha says. But if you feel insecure, if your self-esteem is low, if you feel that I am not being able to compete or I am not being able to get what I want from the other person, that is where it converts into jealousy. And jealousy actually prevents you from achieving because jealousy takes away the focus from yourself onto the other person. In rivalry, I'm focusing on myself and saying, what can I do to improve myself and to get a better deal? In jealousy, we are all the time trying to put the other person down. And that is what is a very, very destructive state of uh, mind. People who are jealous, really live very miserable uh, lives. Okay, Vidya again says, if a person says the same thing again and again and still thinks that we should ignore, is it really uh, possible? Uh, I will definitely say it is possible, uh, Vidya. It is difficult. It is not that easy. I acknowledge that. But let me make it very clear that it is not impossible. In fact, if you know that the person is saying the same thing repeating, which is senseless, which is only out of some form of jealousy or some form of uh, envy or whatever, over a period of time, it should make it easier for you to ignore that person, saying that I know why this person is doing it. I know what is the state of mind of this uh, person. And therefore, I am not going to take cognizance of what this person is uh, saying and I'm not going to get carried away by what this person is saying. Uh, uh, saying. Surekha says social media and increased connectivity are catalysts that add to our vulnerability to jealousy and the attendant stress that it causes. How can one feel enough and complete when invaded by feelings of inferiority, inadequacy and reduced self-respect? You have yourself given at least part of the answer, Surekha. If I identify that I have this feeling of in inferiority, inadequacy, or reduced self-respect, self-worth, self-esteem, then I need to work on myself rather than focusing on the other person and the other person and my relationship on the other person. Take a pause. Let things continue with, even when things are not very good with the other person and your relationship. Focus inward, put in a lot of effort systematically, preferably with the help of somebody to gu guide you. This is what Seema was also saying. Why is it that we run these training programs like DCS and all that? Everybody has got good intentions in doing a lot of things, but you also need some tips and techniques at a very practical level, like how I keep giving in these Saturday talks also. So once you do that and you build yourself, it becomes far easier to deal with things like jealousy or possessiveness, right? Akila says, I once heard from one of my colleagues that her husband is not possessive about her. She feels that he does not bother about her. She even said, I wish he was possessive. What kind of behavior? It's a very interesting behavior, Akila. 
people who are craving for love actually want to be possessed. They feel very nice if, let's say, her husband, you know, is all the time keeping tabs on her, checking where are you going, whom are you meeting, controlling who should be her friend, even being suspicious. Why were you talking to that man? See, I love you so much. I don't want you to talk to any other man. And it gives a real boost to this life. Ah, see how much my husband loves me. But that is not true. It is again going back to the same thing which I have been telling. You are insecure. You have low, less self-worth. And you want that to be that gap to be filled in by your husband becoming possessive about you. That's a very wrong way of trying to do. It's like a person says that I've got so many problems that I go and get drunk. Once I have started drinking, I lose all the problems and I feel very nice. It never helps. Renu says jealousy is something gets triggered by others. It's not in one. Yes, definitely. You know, it is something which comes out of how people have treated you, what have been your experiences in life, what have been your role models. If you had significant adults like parents or any other people who also had this jealousy, it is very easy for you in your growing years to pick it up and then you also start imbibing the same thing. Please be very, very aware of that. Sonia says, we are three sisters. Middle one feels we too get more affection from parents. And she never connect to both of us. We always end up arguing if we meet or chat, what's the solution? To start with, as you said, no, when you uh, uh, meet this particular sister, spend some exclusive time with her. Ask about her welfare and her well-being. Ask her what all is happening, good things, bad things in her life. And wherever she shows something good happening, some achievement, something which she has been able to do successfully, give her a lot of positive strokes. Let her feel important. Let her feel appreciated. Let her feel that I am also somebody. Once you have got her over slowly to your uh, side, then start off with slowly asking her, why do you feel that way? And that is not true. Clarifying certain instances. No, that time this happened and that happened. Improve your communication with her. Chances are you will be able to work on it. Okay, there's a thin line between possessiveness and loving or liking. It's confusing sometimes to understand. I agree. There is a thin line, but the line still does exist. So, become being aware of that thin line and where it stands is something that will make it very clear to you and will give you the ability on how to deal with the uh, situations, right? Reshu says, but what if saying ill is in being jealous is not restricted to one person, but the whole bunch of family, and they keep repeating that over and over, it gets registered in others' minds. How do we stop that or stay unaffected by uh, uh, that? Yes, I understand that it's a very, very difficult situation if you're surrounded by near and dear who you know, express the same types of behavior, the same type of uh, issues. It has got so ingrained in them and they are copying from each other. So you find that this whole bunch of family, as you said, and they keep repeating it over and over again. You will have to work very hard to insulate yourself from them. It's a very tough situation to be in. Take the help and take the support of somebody who will guide you, who will do some hand holding with you because it may not be that easy as you said you know how can you stop or stay unaffected you cannot stop let's also be very clear on that they are adults they have chosen a particular way of uh, behavior you can't change them so easily it's only how do you stay unaffected and for that i think if you are unable to insulate yourself mentally and emotionally seek help from a close friend a counselor whoever it is there you can constantly unburden yourself by saying, you know, today what happened, this, 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 they said. And if you get that reassurance that there's nothing wrong that you are doing, you are not responsible for it, then you feel better and your ability to be insulate yourself improves. Sonia says, courses from Banjara make you very powerful. You can deal with any situation and understanding becomes better. Thanks, Sonia. That's a really nice and genuine compliment 
to get from person like you and i agree with you that that is our endeavor that is what we are aiming for all the time we do not go into theory in any of our courses we don't have textbooks we don't have exams the reason being that we want to enrich your quality of life through empowerment from your inner side to make you wake up and think for yourself rather than pushing some information down you that's real learning i wish the entire education system was working on the same principle but knowing that we cannot change the whole world we do our little bit whatever we can surekha says the need to conceal deny or disguise our feeling of jealousy makes things worse absolutely right surekha that is why when i was giving you the tips i told you no the first one was acknowledge accept and the second was confess to somebody now those who do not want to do that is what surekha is talking about they conceal they deny they even disguise the feeling i told you know they say i love that person so much that is why i am doing this i feel so concerned about that one that is why i am doing it and as long as they are in denial it's very difficult so if you come across somebody who is going through this sort of a thing just gently and you know periodically keep reminding the person that by thinking this way or having this attitude your life is you know going down your happiness your well being is going down i'm concerned about you i'm not pointing a finger i'm not saying that you are doing something wrong i'm not saying that you are a jealous person but i'm just saying that somehow not being able to cope with this situations or dealing with them in a negative manner is affecting your life and that is what is making me upset yes we have renu who is uh, saying to stay unaffected from jealousy do we need to maintain distance from such people as ignoring is difficult yes if you find that ignoring is difficult as a first step maintain distance build yourself up come back to some level of formness and understanding and when you feel that yes now i am stronger mentally i have built this wall i can maintain that insulation that is when you go back and continue with your relationship with the other person anita says hi was filling the form of dcs why here too we are asked father or husband's name i know this question is not relevant here but would love to understand because i am sure much thought has been given in this academy for oh, yes we do and, and after you mentioned that we have discussed it among ourselves in the management team of manjara also see what happens is that there are certain norms which are fixed by government regulations anywhere so wherever you go you starting from an aadhar card to a driving license to a bank account or something it's a standard procedure that you fill in something called father's name or husband name right so in the form we have put that uh, in but mind you we do not compel anybody to write anything that they uh, want there are people who are not happy with certain relationship and they don't want to mention that person saying that yes so and so may be my husband my father but i do not want that person's name in this we respect that the only thing is that india being such a giant country and we having so many common names and all that it is possible that there may be some confusion so if there is some anita or even an anita manjunath which again may be a common name and there are two of them how do we differentiate so normally we use this thing like even from men we are asking what is your father's name we are also acknowledge whether you'd like to write your you know mother's name i have a student who had a baby and he decided that the baby should have his name that is the baby's first name and then mother's name and then father's name so the full name of the baby is his own name his mother's name and his father's name i thought that was a wonderful thing that that person has done and we laud such people and we encourage and we are very very open to you know whatever is your way of thinking and whatever you want to do and we have such variety you know among our uh, students i remember a few years back when we were having a valedictory and we said you know you can get one guest whoever you want to and this girl comes up and says can i bring my wife first i thought i've not heard correctly i said what now ali can i bring my wife to this thing and then i understood she's a lesbian and she has 
she is in a long term relationship with a person whom she considers as her wife so be it and we invited her and we had a wonderful time and that girl came and you know bonded so well with us and became part of our family so we are always there for anything of that uh, sort okay surika says a counselee feels very hurt because a loved one chooses to be distant and uninvolved with her this loved one is warm towards others so this is not her nature and she is deliberately choosing to stay away from my counselee who is basically very kind and loving see this is a very interesting thing surika this counselee of yours no she is basically very kind and loving what i want to emphasize is me loving somebody and the love reaching somebody else are two different things sometimes let's say a mother can be very kind to the child and say you must have your breakfast you must have your milk you must have these fruits you must have this she's trying to be kind no but if she is overdoing it what happens the child starts distancing himself from the mother he tries to run away when it is breakfast time and the mother feels very sad the same thing happens when you are in a love relationships it is not enough to be kind and loving you have to analyze what the other person wants and see whether you are giving the other person what he or she wants that's why i say that all close relationships start with good communication sit down talk it over with the uh, uh, person it can be done and people like surekha counselors can play a wonderful role in guiding and gently showing a direction to such people because when they are lost and when they are very frustrated you know they find it very difficult to do logical uh, things renu says to stay um, unaffected from jealousy do we need to maintain distance from such people oh i have already answered that uh yeah then is also asked a very nice question that why is manjunath your second name okay we won't go into those controversy it's all uh, in in a very light hearted manner and it's all fun and it's uh, wonderful if you can see there's a very famous journalist whose name is uh, swaminathan ankle sarya ayer he writes regularly in times of india and a lot of pub- publications very acknowledged economist and uh, journalist now swaminathan ankle sarya ayer ankle sarya is the name of his father in law when he got married he got married to a girl whose surname was ankle sarya normally what happens the wife acquires the surname of the husband right this man was swaminathan ayer he decided to insert ankle sarya into his name that is his wife's surname and now he is very well acknowledged as swaminathan ankle sarya ayer and we lord such people we really appreciate such uh, people right okay asha says my husband is always involved in other people's welfare than mine should i let go and have confronted him but he says this is the way i am yes there are a lot of people asha who decide that when i help my own wife or if i show attention to my own wife it is like duty it is like i have to do it but you know when i go out of the way i go and help some neighbor i go and help some colleague they praise me they say oh you gone out of the way thank you so much so somewhere along the line i think he is looking for that recognition and that appreciation and that is what makes him go out of the way and do it if you can turn around and instead of confronting him or questioning him if you can also start praising him for the work that he does involved in other people's welfare oh i came to know that you help your colleague take his mother to the hospital or you help so and so who was going through this crisis i feel so proud of you that you are my husband reverse it and try it out for a few months and see i feel that there will be a difference in the way he interacts with uh, you ha huh, roshan says i have missed the whole program but i would like to ask why are people jealous especially my own sister of my studying and progressing in life the why part of it roshan is very difficult to answer because the reasons can be a hundred of them but yes if you really love your sister and if you really want to find out start talking to her find out from her ask her what she thinks about this ask her 
why do you feel that my studying or progressing is not the right thing? Do you feel I should have done something better? In what way do you feel? The more you ask open-ended and neutral questions and make her justify what criticism that she is giving, no, the better are your chances of understanding. Once you understand that it is primarily out of you know, very petty jealousy and something of that sort, then you have to, of course, let go and try to maintain that distance as we always uh, um, say. Anita says, I checked to, wait, Krishnan says, Ali, from my experience, I find that possessive people are much happy than the free souls around. They have a hold and they feel possessive to do things and improve it, even if it's people, car or other things. General soul do not much and live meager lives. People who are possessive, as long as the possession is going on the right track, I agree with Krishna that, you know, they are happier. So I feel I'm in control. I possess my wife, my children, my subordinates are very happy. But I'm running a very big risk because if something happens to that relationship, or that person says, no, you can't possess me anymore. I'm very unhappy with you the way you have been controlling me. Then I don't know where to go. And I feel miserable. And that is a risk that the possessive person is taking. If he's extremely lucky, he may last out a lifetime of possessiveness. But again, I come back to the important point. You say that possessive people are happy. Possessive people are just getting that thrill that I have this, this, this. But deep down inside, they are definitely insecure. Renu said, not necessary to have surname of your hubby. You can always give your initials to your uh, siblings, my kids. Uh, that's what I'm saying. We have entered a world where so many different things and interesting things are happening with regard to this. It's just that sometimes, you know, you maintain that uh, thing of... Uh, what you call, you know, that uh, just a procedure that when you're filling in form, you write down what's your father's name or what's your uh, husband's name or anything like that. So barring that it makes it convenient if there are two people with the same names, then you differentiate it by son of so-and-so or wife of so-and-so or whatever it is. Like. To me, it's a very, very negligible and a procedural uh, matter. I uh, never uh, question so many times we have people coming in, you know, who, when we ask them who is there in your family, they write about children, but they don't write about spouse. We respect that. Yes. We don't know what it is. She may have lost a spouse. She may be diverse. She may not be giving importance to the spouse and not considering that person part of the life or whatever it is. So we focus on the relationship that the person is talking about. And that is when we slowly encourage the person to also understand that sometime or the other, you have to acknowledge certain uh, you know, relationships which are always uh, 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 there. And that is how life goes on. So many interesting uh, uh, things are happening. Life is changing so much. Relationships are changing so much. Lifestyles are changing so much. COVID itself brought about so much of an opportunity to realign and rethink your lives. But believe me, some people are not being able to cope with it. Some people have withdrawn into a shell. Some people have lost the capacity to socialize. And this includes a lot of children who have been locked in. I have very deep concern about this. If you are so possessive about your child that you don't want your child to step out of the house because he may get COVID, I would not call it love. I would call it overprotectiveness. That child will grow up and accuse you, saying that all my peers could, you know, make friends, could socialize. Now I have grown up and I don't know how to make friends, how to socialize and what to do. So please understand that lives are changing, lifestyles are changing. We have to not only adapt to change, we also have to anticipate change. And as we come to the end of the program, as the ticker at the bottom is showing you, next Saturday, we will be talking about why men shout and women cry. This uh, I've taken from the title of a book by John Gray, you know, who uh, goes in depth to explain the differences between men and women. But in the Indian context, in the way we deal with uh, situations, 
why is it that this happens? I'm not saying every man shouts and that every woman cries, but there is a lot of this sort of thing happening. And whenever it is actually happening, how do you deal with it at a practical level? That's what we'll be discussing. That is on next Saturday, 21st of May at 11 o'clock. See you. Bye-bye.